Welcome to our lecture online. Now that we've seen some examples of how to find the Fourier transform and we've seen some of the theory behind it, now we're ready to have a new appreciation for the graphing of the Fourier series. What that means is that we started with an original periodic function like this, for which we found the solution in a previous video, and realizing that the, that the frequency is 1 over the period or that the angular frequency is equal to 2 pi f or 2 pi over the period, 2 pi radians over the period, we can now graph each individual portion of the solution. We have the DC portion and then the various AC portions that go on to infinity, but we have to realize that we only need a certain number of them to have a good representation of the original function. So we have the DC portion right here where the amplitude is equal to 1 half, A sub naught was equal to 1 half, that's what we have over here. Then the second portion, the second term right here, has an amplitude of 2 over pi, which is right here. It goes from 0 to 2 over pi, and from 0 to negative 2 over pi, and it's sine of omega t, which is the function right here. Notice that one wave, so to speak, of the function, or one period of the function, is equal to 2 pi. It's 2 pi radians per period. The third term right here has a smaller amplitude. 2 over pi divided by 3, or 2 over 3 pi, which means the amplitude here is only one-third the amplitude there. You can see that it goes from 0 to 2 over 3 pi to negative, from 0 to negative 2 over 3 pi. Also notice that the frequency is three times the frequency of this term, which means you have three, as, three times as many oscillations per period. And I think I did that right here. Half, one, one and a half. Yep, that is correct. Then the Next term right here, notice the amplitude is smaller again. It's now 2 over 5 pi, so it's 1 fifth, right here, 1 fifth, the amplitude we had over there. And the frequency is 5 times the frequency over here. So for every 1, 2 pi period, we have 5 times as many oscillations. Instead of one oscillation, we have 5 of them. And of course, the seventh term would be smaller again with seven oscillations. The next term would be smaller again with nine oscillations and so forth. When you add all those together on a single graph, this is what you would end up with. It looks kind of like that, but it's been lowered. In other words, the height here is the same as the height there in the negative direction. And so for us to get something that looks kind of like the original function, we have to boost it up. And that's what the DC term is for. So if we add all these together, we get this, and then if we add the DC term with it, we lift it up by one half, and we get this, which is a very close approximation of what we have over there, only with the first four terms, the one DC term and the three AC terms. And again, if you continue to add more and more terms, this will look more and more like a square wave function like that, just like what we had over there. And that's how we can get a better appreciation of how the Fourier series works. It's simply a summation of an infinite number of sine waves or cosine waves or a combination of the two, plus potentially a DC term. And when you add them all together, they look very much like your original function. But in this case, instead of having a square wave function, which is hard to work with, we now have a function expressed in sines and cosines, which are much better to work with because they give you much more of the information about the amplitude and the frequency of the original function. And that's how we have a better appreciation for the meaning of the Fourier series by graphing it out like this.